Hi, Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to talk about operations on fractions. Remember, operations are adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. But first, we're going to talk about the fundamental principle of fractions. This is what allows us to simplify a fraction. If we have a fraction where a times c is the numerator and b times c is the denominator, Notice that the numerator and the denominator both have c in common. We can rewrite that where the c is a separate fraction. And because you have c over c, that's equivalent to 1, and this reduces to a over b. Let's look at some real examples. 3 over 15. Well, 3 as factors is 1 times 3. And 15 is 5 times 3. Using that fundamental principle of fractions, that's the same as 1 over 5 times 3 over 3. But 3 over 3 is 1, and we know that anything times 1 is itself. So this simplifies to 1 fifth. Look at example 2. The numbers are a little bit larger, but we know 48 is 3 times 16 and 64 is 4 times 16. Again we can rewrite this as 3 fourths times 16 over 16 and because the numerator is 16 and the denominator is 16 this is equivalent to 1 and this simplifies to 3 fourths. Now keep this principle in mind as we go through the actual operations on fractions. The first operation we're going to look at is multiplication. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. So you're going to multiply straight across. And when I multiply, I like to factor those fractions first and then multiply because it helps me simplify. Our first numerator is 10, which factors to 2 times 5. And that first denominator is 13, which is prime, so it's 13. The second numerator is 26, well that's 2 times 13. And that denominator of 15 is 3 times 5. Now we're multiplying straight across, so we put all of those factors for the numerators together and we can put all of the factors for the denominator together. Now using that fundamental principle of fractions, we're looking to see what the numerator and denominator have in common because those will simplify out as one. Notice that they both have this 13, so that simplifies out as one. And they also have a five. When we simplify that out, our numerator is left with 2 times 2, and our denominator is 3. So now we can do that multiplication in the numerator, 2 times 2, which is 4, and our simplified answer from multiplying these two fractions is 4 thirds. Look at example 2. Here we have a fraction times the whole number 5. Remember, the whole number is the same as being over 1. So 5 is the same as 5 over 1. Let's do that same process of factoring the numerators and the denominators and then combining them. The first numerator is 9, which factors the 3 times 3. And that denominator of 10 is 2 times 5. The second numerator, 5 is prime and the denominator is just 1. Now combine those into one fraction. The numerator is 3 times 3 times 5, and the denominator is 2 times 5 times 1. Again, that principle of fractions, we're looking for what the numerator and denominator have in common, which would be this 5, and that simplifies to 1. That leaves 3 times 3 in the numerator and 2 times 1 in the denominator. 
3 times 3 is 9, and 2 times 1 is 2. So we get 9 halves. See how factoring first allows you to end up with the most simplified fraction at the end? Okay, before we move into division, we need to talk about reciprocals. And reciprocals are two non-zero real numbers when multiplied produce one. Super confusing. So let's look at some examples. Remember that four as a whole number is the same as the fraction four over one. Well, the reciprocal just takes that fraction and flips it. So the reciprocal of four would be one fourth. Now in example two, we're given the fraction 1 eighth. If you flip that, you get eight over one, or the reciprocal of eight. Now we can check this. Eight over one times one over eight, so our reciprocal times the fraction we were given, equals eight over eight equals one. So that's how you quickly find a reciprocal. Take your fraction and flip it. Now that you know what a reciprocal is, you can quickly divide fractions. Because a fraction divided by a fraction, you keep the first fraction, you change the multiplication, and then you multiply it by the reciprocal. Or you may have heard this as copy dot flip. So again, what that means, you take your first fraction, which in our example is 8 over 11, you change to multiplication, that's the dot, and you flip or multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction, which here is 7 fourths. Now we're going to factor each of these. 8 is 2 times 4, 11 is prime, 7 is prime, and 4, we're going to leave as 4 because I notice I have a 4 in the numerator of my first fraction. Combine our numerators, that would be 2 times 4 times 7, and our denominators, 11 times 4. We're looking to see what factors the numerator and denominators have in common. That's 4. Remember, that simplifies out as 1. So we're left with 2 times 7 over 11, or 14 over 11. Now let's look at adding and subtracting fractions. Remember when you add and subtract a fraction, the denominator has to be the same number. If it's not the same number, you have to get it to a common denominator before you can add or subtract. And that common denominator is called the LCD, or the least common denominator. Once you have that common denominator, you're either going to add the numerators or subtract the numerators if you're adding or subtracting the fractions. And notice that the denominator doesn't change. It stays the same. You're not adding or subtracting those. That's why it has to be a common denominator. Now here we have three fractions, and notice that they don't have common denominators. So we need to find that LCD, the least common denominator. What I do is I start with my largest denominator, which is 8, and I look at the multiples. So 1 8 is 8, 2 is 16, 3 is 24. And then I start making a list with the next one. And I like to do this from largest to smallest. So 6, 12, 3 sixes is 18, and then 24. Well, so far they have 24 in common. Can we do the same with the 4? Sure, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. So our LCD is 24. Now you don't always have to make a list like this, but it can help when you have some tricky fractions or if you just need the extra practice. Now that we have the LCD of 24, we need to convert each of these fractions. So we have 1 6 and we're going to multiply it by some fraction and we need it to have a denominator of 24. 
So six times what gives us 24? Six times four. Well, our numerator will also be four because we're multiplying by one. If we multiply by one, we aren't changing the meaning of that one six. We're just adjusting what it's out of. So it's out of a total of 24 instead of six. So we multiply the denominator by four. So we multiply the numerator by four and that equivalent fraction is four out of 24. Do the same with three fourths. So we're looking at what are we multiplying by to get a denominator of 24? Well, four times six gives us 24. And remember, you're multiplying by the same numerator and denominator. You're multiplying by one. Our numerator here is three times six or 18 out of 24. And our last fraction is five eighths. We need to multiply that by something to get to 24. Eight times three gives us 24. So multiply the numerator by three as well, and that is 15 24 Now that we know the equivalent fractions for our three given fractions, we can rewrite that math problem. We have four 24 plus 18 24 minus 15 24 and remember, when you're adding or subtracting, that denominator will always stay the same. It's going to stay as 24. And we're just adding and subtracting the numerators. So we have 4 plus 18 minus 15. OK, 4 plus 18 is 22. And then we have 22 minus 15, which is 7. And again, that denominator stays as 24, so this simplifies to 7 24 Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, I hope you'll check out my other math videos for more help.